Hello everyone, my name is Chiri Mekiska. I'm currently the head of the Brain Diseases Analysis Laboratory, which is based at the Brno University of Technology in the Czech Republic. And in the following, let's say 30 minutes, I would like to tell you something about our research in the field of objective diagnosis of graph motor difficulties in children with developmental dysgraphia. Before I proceed, I would like to acknowledge my team I'm not going to name all the members, but generally they are based at our university, at the Czech Academy of Sciences, at Masaryk University, and at the Pompeu Fabra University in Spain. Um, just to very quickly and briefly introduce my work. As I said, I'm currently heading the Brain Diseases Analysis Laboratory, where we deal with objective and non-invasive analysis of brain diseases such as Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, dementia with little bodies, and also with neurodevelopmental diseases such as developmental dysgraphia. In terms of modalities, we deal mainly with speech signal analysis, online handwriting analysis, gait analysis, cognitive functions analysis, analysis of sleep, etc. And basically, we provide psychologists or neurologists with tools that are used for objective diagnosis, assessment or monitoring of these diseases. Okay, so that was a very brief introduction of me. And uh, now let's move on to the topic of my lecture, which is developmental dysgraphia. Developmental dysgraphia is defined as the disturbance of the production of written process which is related to the mechanics of handwriting. And generally, developmental dysgraphia is associated with many symptoms such as problems with the size control, a child is not able to follow the lining, he or she has, to, has too high pressure on the pen tip, we can observe messy organization of the text, sometimes some strokes are missing, etc. Uh, so usually when uh, I explain how the children with developmental dysgraphia feel, I use this very simple exercise and I would like you to follow this exercise and to do this exercise uh, with me. So in the frame of this exercise, let's start and uh, let's try to write, uh, let's say, word hello. Hello, okay. And now, in the second step, try to write the same word hello, but flipped upside down, okay. So try to do it, try to write hello, it upside down okay like this so you can see that this is really challenging in fact this is very poor performance but this is really how the children with developmental dysgraphia feel um, to give you a better intuition about this, uh, I will show you one example from our protocol. Uh, we use this protocol to collect data from children having handwriting or graphomotor difficulties. And this protocol contains one task where we have this combined loop, uh, let's say picture or drawing. Uh, so I will show you how is this performed, first of all, by a child without uh, graphomotor disabilities? So you can see that the movement is very smooth, uh, the velocity is not changing too much, and this is, this is a nice performance, nice product. Okay. And now I will show you the same task, but in this case performed by a child having uh, graphomotor disabilities. So 
So you can see that this child is completely lost. He or she doesn't know what, uh, where to draw. Uh, she's uh, lost in space, and the product is very poor, unfortunately. Okay, I think I can stop it. So uh, sometimes it can look funny, but believe me, uh, it's not that funny for children having. Uh, development to dysgraphia because imagine that you are writing like this and that uh, you have to copy some text for blackboard or whiteboard uh, that you have to follow some dictation etc so in fact uh, development to dysgraphia has very detrimental impact on children quality of life on their self-esteem on their career and it can be very depressive so currently uh, there are several tests that are used to diagnose or assess uh, handwriting difficulties that are associated with development of dysgraphia. For instance, there is this Minnesota Handwriting Assessment World Sentence Copy Test Concise Evaluation Scale for Children Handwriting, etc. But generally these approaches and these tests have some limitations. Uh, first of all, just few or, or I mean there are few or no screening tools for teachers or parents who are often the first ones to recognize handwriting issues. Then uh, these tests uh, have usually questionable or unknown psychometric properties. But probably the biggest issue is that even when special educationists are experts in the field, there could be inconsistent outcomes from the diagnostic process, which means that, for instance, two experts can uh, assess one child differently using different scores. So there is usually high inter-rater uh, variability. Okay, so Based on this, a few years ago we came up with one question and that is how to improve diagnosis of handwriting difficulties and then indirectly how to improve or enable effective intervention and improve children's quality of life. And uh, this is more or less the concept that we used at the beginning. So as you can see uh, we are using digitizers, in our case uh, Wacom technology, where we collect handwriting or drawing from children and then we process this so-called online handwriting with some signal processing algorithms, with some machine learning that uh, is extracting some features and describing some symptoms inside. And then we provide the experts with some numbers and uh, based on these numbers they are performing diagnosis assessment or monitoring. Okay so at the beginning we start with this question and that is can we automatically assess handwriting difficulties? So for this purpose we enrolled 97 children uh, attending third or fourth grade of an uh, elementary school and these children were assessed by the handwriting proficiency screening questionnaire and also by an extended version where children assess themselves. So here on this figure on the left side you can see an example of a paragraph which is performed by a child without uh, any handwriting difficulties and on the right side you can see the same paragraph but performed by a child having handwriting difficulties. Maybe you do not see any difference but if you focus on the red color then this red color represents movement of the pen when the pen is not touching the surface of a paper. So this movement is the movement between two strokes, we call it in-air movement. And if you focus on this in-air movement, then on the right side you can see a lot of hesitation, uh, some interruptions inside words, etc. Okay, 
So regarding tasks, as you have seen, we used a paragraph copy task, uh, which has been performed on the Wacom Intuos Pro L using Wacom Inking Pen. And uh, from the online handwriting signals, we extracted some basic temporal, spatial, kinematic, and dynamic uh, parameters, some very common and general features. Uh, regarding statistical analysis and machine learning, uh, in terms of co-founding factors, we considered age, gender, and grade. Then uh, we performed some statistical analysis. We ran some uh, statistical tests. I'm not going much into technical details. And then finally, we used a machine learning model based on the extreme gradient boosting algorithm to estimate the scores of HPSQ and HPSQC automatically. So here are some uh, results. We observed that boys perform worse than uh, girls, like uh, in many other fields. Then uh, we found out that there are no significant correlations between handwriting parameters and age and gender. But there was some significant correlation between handwriting features and grade. More specifically, children in higher classes spend shorter time by writing. They have lower tilt, shorter strokes and bigger chair. Um, these results make sense. And regarding the machine learning part, uh, here we have some results in the table. And for instance, in the case of HPSQC, which is the scale where children uh, assess themselves, we were able to estimate the score of this uh, scale with more or less 15% uh, error, which is not that bad. So uh, regarding the initial question whether we are able to automatically assess handwriting difficulties, then the answer is yes. Uh, at least we can model children's self-perception. So consequently, uh, we came up with another question and that is, can we model a diagnosis made by a professional as well? So for this purpose, we enrolled 500 children starting at nursery school and uh, ending in the fourth grade of a primary school. And for this purpose, we used very complex protocol that you can see here. It contains some uh, graphomotor elements because they are elements of letters. Then there are some figures where the children uh, have to copy them and then recall from memory. Uh, there is a complex figure, there is some kind of dictation, etc. And that, uh, or this, is the concept of this study. So we acquired uh, handwriting and drawing of the children using Wacom technology. In this case, it was Wacom Intuos as well. Then we extracted some features and we fed these features into some machine learning models that were diagnosing them or discriminating between uh, uh, or into groups into two groups where one group contains children uh, without any handwriting difficulties and the other one contains children with the handwriting difficulties. Okay, uh, so for this purpose we use just part of the data set, uh, more specifically children from the third and fourth grade and as the reference as uh, I mean as a label we used uh, some uh, inputs from experts, more specifically for remedial teacher who was assessing these children as having or uh, as having handwriting difficulties or children uh, without these uh, handwriting difficulties. Uh, in terms of tasks, as I said, uh, they were performed on the Wacom Intuos Pro L using Wacom inking pen. And in this specific study, we focused on uh, graphomotor elements. So uh, regarding features, 
we extracted some uh, very common conventional features as well as some advanced features, uh, for instance, based on modulation spectra or based on the tunable Q wavelet transform. Uh, these features uh, are good for quantification of deficient fine motor skills, of poor dexterity, poor muscle tone, or unspecified motor clumsiness. And also we used uh, fractional or derivative features that are very uh, useful when analyzing kinematics. So these were some advanced features. Uh, regarding statistical analysis and machine learning, again, we used uh, or consider the same covariates such as age, gender and grade. Then we used some feature selection methods based on minimum redundancy, maximum relevance and sequential floating for oscillation. And finally, we trained a machine learning model based on the random forest classifier, which was automatically diagnosing and writing difficulties. So here are some uh, results again. Uh, we observed that spiral, sawtooth or rainbow have very good discrimination power. Next, that kinematic features play a significant role. Uh, these features are good for quantification uh, of the process of handwriting. And next, uh, we observe that children with graphomotor difficulties have significant problems with uh, vertical movement, probably because it requires coordinated movement and finer flexions or extensions of more joints than in the case of uh, the horizontal movement. Uh, in the table, we can see some results uh, from the classification analysis. We can focus on the last row where we can observe that we were able to diagnose handwriting difficulties with more or less 84% accuracy. Okay, 84% um, accuracy is not that bad, but still it's not a great result. So we started to dig into the data and started to explore where are the issues, why is the accuracy so small. And we soon found out that the problem is always the same and that's uh, the subjectivity again. And uh, I will explain you why. So after this, uh, we prepared another experiment where we enrolled 114 children at the third and fourth grade. And uh, these children were evaluated or assessed uh, in three ways. First of all, they were assessed by a special education counselor, then they were assessed by a remedial teacher, and finally they assessed themselves by the HPSQC scale. And the question was, what is the consensus between these uh, approaches? And we soon found out that the consensus is very poor. In fact, uh, there was agreement only in 64% of observations. More specifically, there was high agreement on children without graphomotor difficulties, but there was very low agreement on children without, uh, I'm sorry, with the graphomotor difficulties. And again, the question was why? There are several reasons. First of all, uh, again, there is this subjectivity because everyone uh, rates something different. Uh, and everyone assesses something different in terms uh, of product and process. I mean, someone is more focused on assessment of product and someone is more focused on assessment of process. Moreover, someone is assessing the process on, of handwriting on surface, which means on the paper, and someone was focused on uh, the assessment in air where the pen was uh, moving between two strokes. So there is very low inter-rate reliability. Next, uh, as I said, we used some advanced features that provided us with some good results, but then we found out that, in fact, uh, the experts were not so much interested in these results. Why? Because uh, they are less interpretable. Uh, what does it mean? 
the experts, when they are performing some decision, uh, they need to interpret this decision. So, for instance, um, when they observe uh, gradually decreasing velocity in handwriting, then uh, they can link this with progressing fatigue. So they are able to link the features with some physiological processes. But in the case of advanced features, this is not that easy. They are less clinically interpretable. And the same applies to machine learning models. They prefer, let's say, uh, easier machine learning models or more simple, where we can uh, perform very easy interpretability. Next. I was talking about binary diagnosis, uh, but in fact, a binary diagnosis is very rough. We cannot just discriminate uh, between children having and not having handwriting difficulties, but we need a more complex or finer rating. So, in other words, we need a scale where we can rate handwriting difficulties, for instance, from 0 until 40. And finally, we need a detailed analysis. Uh, our colleagues from Switzerland published one uh, interesting article uh, where they uh, reported that some children can have more or less the same global score of handwriting difficulties, but in fact, if you perform more detailed analysis, they could have completely different issues, completely different problems. So, for instance, one of them uh, can have some problems with kinematic and dynamic uh, features, uh, another one uh, can have problems with some temporal features, uh, another one with some spatial, etc. So, although all these three children have the same global score, in fact, they have completely different problems. So based on these observations and based on this knowledge, we decided to start from the bottom and we followed these uh, steps. So uh, first of all, based on a comprehensive literature review and based on discussions with experts, we tried to identify all the possible symptoms that are associated with the handwriting or graphomotor disabilities. For instance, higher duration of writing, disfluency in line, disfluency in time, progressive fatigue, and so on. In the second step, we selected only those that could be quantified using a digitizing tablet. So, for instance, uh, it is uh, very challenging and difficult to assess legibility. Next, uh, and this is what we are currently working on. Uh, we are just simulating all the symptoms and we are identifying the symptoms in the data sets that we already have. And then, based on some heuristic information and based on discussions with experts, we are designing completely new features. And in addition, we are training machine learning models that select only those features having good discrimination power. So this is what we are currently doing. In the future, we are going to uh, prepare a norm for each symptom so that then it will be possible to compare children uh, or they, their process and product, their performance uh, with these norms. Next, uh, we will perform some data-driven analysis for instance, based on clustering, so that uh, then we can make some subgroups of children having common manifestations and we can further explore them. And finally, with the support of all the stakeholders, including psychology, special education counselors, schools, children, parents, Czech government, and also uh, uh, thanks to VACOM, we are going to develop a new software of objective uh, graphomotor disabilities or handwriting disabilities analysis. Uh, just one comment. Since uh, uh, we are at the Wacom uh, conference, uh, until now we were using Wacom in tools with paper, but then uh, based on several publications, we moved to Cintiq because uh, in terms of relative differences, we can uh, afford to move from uh, paper to, to display. 
Okay. Uh, to sum up, this is the uh, concept that we currently follow. So again, uh, we are collecting data using Wacom technology from children. We are performing some kind of parameterization. But then we are modeling each symptom individually and we are quantifying each symptom uh, individually on a scale. So that uh, based on this, we have very nice and complex profile of each children. And then, uh, of course, we are also uh, uh, calculating a global score and all these inputs together help uh, psychologists or some other experts to perform more effective diagnosis, assessment and monitoring. Okay, to conclude my talk, um, although development of dysgraphia has really detrimental impact on children quality of life unfortunately until now to the best of our knowledge in practice there is no objective tool that is used for diagnosis of this neurodevelopmental disorder nevertheless uh, thanks to cooperation uh, with many stakeholders and thanks to wacom we are about to introduce a new tool that will enable experts to perform timely and complex diagnosis and assessment of developmental dysgraphia and that will hopefully have positive impact on quality of life of children living with this kind of disorder okay so um Thank you very much for your attention. I would like to thank the organizers for invitation to this amazing event. And finally, I would like to wish you all good luck in this crazy period of pandemia. Thank you very much.